Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. First, I would like to acknowledge Pastor Mitchell, the shepherd that God has placed over his house and over this pulpit. I am thankful that he lets me stand here one more time in front of you. When he called on Friday, I was going to the prison to preach. I preached Friday. I preached Saturday. And now God is fixing to deliver a message he's been having for about eight months around here today on Sunday. I would like to acknowledge Reverend Lee, Minister of Pastoral Care, and my associate ministers, and the men and women of God here at Mount Zion. Good morning. Now this sermon here has been on my mind for a while. And I want to go ahead and get into it because uh, this is what God wants you to hear. I know it is Youth Sunday, but God don't prepare youth and adult sermon for me. He prepares sermons. So I want the youth to get close to the adults and I want them to grab Bibles because I preach strictly from the Bible. Would you please pray with me? Oh God, we thank you again for letting us be in your presence. Lord, we ask that you open our minds and let us hear from you today. But before we do anything, we ask you to have mercy and forgive us for our sins so we can have straight communication. We know we have sinned against you. There's nothing we can hide from you. So we ask you to forgive us. But also we ask you to decrease us and increase yourself. But I ask you, Lord, to speak through me and speak for me. Do not let me say anything that are not your words. God, please keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture reading this morning will be coming from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 35 through 37, but the focus verses will be 37 through 39. Would you please stand for the reading of God's word? First Kings chapter 8, verses 35 through 37. And God's words reads through Solomon, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sins because you have afflicted them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sins of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live and send rain on the land you gave your people for an inheritance. The focus verses. When famine or plague come to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when an enemy besiege them in any of the cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, and when a prayer or plea is made by any of your people, each one aware of the afflictions of their own heart, spreading out their hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, forgive and act, deal with each man according to all he, has, he does, since you know his heart, for you alone knows the heart of all men. Yes. The title of this message God has placed on is just pray. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. First Kings. Theologian said that the author is unknown. Some theologians said that Jeremiah and other prophets got together to write this book. But 1 Kings chapter 8, it speaks on how David became king. It also speaks on his wisdom. It also speaks on the building of God's temple. 
the palace, his officials, David marrying into other races, leading him into destruction. But First Kings first talks about his brother Adonijah putting himself up to be king on his own. Without his father David knowing anything about this, because at this time David was a very old man. But upon the prophet Nathan finding this out, he alerts Bathsheba, and Bathsheba alerts David. David makes Solomon king, but also David charged Solomon with several different things. He charged Solomon with the killing of men who have disrespected him and dishonored him, and the good treatment of men who have obeyed him and honored him. It goes on to talk about the guidance and wisdom that Solomon had, the blessings that he got from behind that. It goes on to speak how Solomon wrote 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. It talks about how Solomon became king. The title of this message is Just Pray. Verse 37, stay with me in your Bibles. I need you to follow me in your Bibles, and then you're going to get this. Youngsters, follow me in the Bibles. It said, when phantom or plagues come to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when an enemy besieges them in any of the cities, whatever disaster or disease may come. As we know from Egypt all the way to the promised land, Israel always did good and they did bad. When they did bad, famine and plagues. But I'm going to bring this into 2014. Whenever divorce, addiction, alcohol and drugs, a fatal sickness like cancer, foreclosure, a child being in prison on dope, no money to be found anywhere and bills are over your head. When in your life, famine and plagues enter into your household and consume your total attention, Famine and plagues for 2014. But you know what? Church folks have their tendency to sit back and they say, God, I know I paid my tithes at 10%. I know I was in church every Sunday. I know I was dedicated to Bible study. I know I was at usher board meeting all the time. What have I done to have this to come up on me? These are the questions that church folks, men and women of God, ask when 2014 phantom and plague, divorce, kids in prison. Y'all getting this? Y'all gonna help me preach it? But in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, it, Paul says for our struggles, are not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Now we understand that the battle is between Satan and God. We understand that. But sometimes things happen to us in this life because we forgot who have carried us through this life. Y'all better go with me. Israel, Mount Zion, get this, to be rebroken and humble again. Oh yes, God broke us before, but we forgot. So God, he rebreaks us to get our focus back where it need to be, on God. But Jesus' brother, James, who the Lord spoke through. Y'all know I preach scripture. James chapter one, verses two through four. James said, consider it pure joy, my brothers, Whenever you face trials of many kinds. 
Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. God told me to tell you today, if you don't know, going through hardships are considered a faith builder that he put in place for you. Let me say that again. Going through hardships is a faith-based faith builder that God has put in place for you. So don't think it's strange when ain't no money in the bank. It make you appreciate it when you get some. Y'all gonna help me preach this? But as I studied and read Solomon's prayer of dedication, God brought the realization to me about 1 Kings verse 38. Listen to this. And when a prayer or plea is made by any of your people of Israel, each one, let's stop right there. It says each one. It was millions in Israel. But each one aware of the afflictions of his own heart. In other words, God is saying, you know what you be doing. When I read that, each one aware of the afflictions of his own heart. I got to say it, church folks. Lord, why have this come upon me? You know why it came upon you. But the best part of it, when famine and plagues come into your life and when you go to the Lord and out of everybody in the world and you pray and he can snatch your prayer out of everybody else's prayer And when you was hungry, all of a sudden, a friend stopped by your house that you ain't seen in 20 years and said, I forgot to pay you this money years ago. That's how God's works. But the thing, but the thing, about, the thing about this here, when family and plagues do come into our life, and when we get by ourselves, Solomon says, spreading their hands toward the temple. We go to asking God questions. Then God start telling us the truth. Then God starts showing us the reasons for the seasons of famine and plagues, making us aware of the afflictions of our hearts. Disobedience, not giving back to God what God has given to you. Sin that we thought was hidden, that we only thought we knew, but God sent me by today, Deacon Thomas, 
to tell them to turn to Galatians 6, chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Paul says it plainly, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatever. Let's stop right there. I got some school teachers in here. That word, whatever, a man or a woman sows, also shall they reap. Amen. It says the one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Whatever. Now I understand that sometimes in this life, things just happen. Because that's how life is sometimes. But the Lord has convinced Willie Culpepper that whatever a man sows, also shall he reap. Can't nobody tell me about it. I always feel that if you sow good, good comes into your life. If you sow bad, bad come into your life. If you sow good and bad, good and bad come into your life. But in this Bible, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it says, whatever a man or a woman sows, also shall they reap. And pastor, she dead and gone now, but her name was Elta Culpepper. And she had a saying, she said, I know the Bible is right. And somebody out there is wrong. She said, but this Bible is right. They will never find anybody to find a lie in it. And the word never changes. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 8 because this is going to be good for you. Chapter 8, verse 39. It says, then from heaven, your dwelling place, forgive and act. Deal with each man according to all he does. Since you, God, knows his heart, for you, God, alone, knows the heart yeah. of all men. They say, then from your dwelling place. Sister Mitchie said, then from your dwelling place. He's saying when famine and plagues enter into your life, you get down on your knees or however you pray, and you look toward the heavens. Admit what you have done to put you in the position that you're in. Then, from heaven, his dwelling place. We ain't talking about Oprah. We ain't talking about the psychiatrist. We ain't talking about Dr. Phil. He says, then from heaven, I will hear you on your knees. Sister Rab, you should look toward the heavens and pray to God for thanks, for forgiveness, for sin that he delivered us out of that we couldn't deliver ourselves for sin that he delivered us out of that we couldn't deliver ourselves. Amen. Solomon was praying and asking God to forgive Israel because they had fell short. They brought hardship upon themselves. But they could spread their hands toward the temple where God dwelled and ask for forgiveness and God will redeem them. At the time in this temple they are speaking about, 
where they could just hold their hands toward the temple because at that time, that's where the ark was placed. God hadn't came and wrapped himself up in flesh yet to reconcile man back to him. But in those days, they could just plant their hands toward the temple where the ark was located. And they could ask for forgiveness. But I got good news. That same God that came down here, Deacon Paul, that same God that hung his own self on the cross. Because he said he holds all power. I know somebody saying, hi, what, what, you, what do you mean, Reverend? He hung his own self. If the Bible says he has all power, he raised his own self up. <laughs> I to go have mercy. He raised his own self up from the grave in three days. Where we can hold our hands up toward the heavens, where God's son sit at the right side. We don't need a Solomon. We can go ourselves. But do you go? That's just a question. You ain't got to answer me. But do you go when plague and famine? Oh, we don't have locusts these days. We have the repossessed truck. The repossessed truck. We don't have grasshoppers. We have the constable to come throw your stuff out though. Bars and prisons. Where they lock people off. But I want you to go with me to Psalms 51. David's at verses 3 and 4. And I want you to be real with yourself on this. David says in verse 3, For I know my transgressions and my sins is always before me. Y'all ain't hear me. He said, I know. And we all know that our sins and transgressions are before us. Against you, in verse 4. You ain't sinning against Pastor Mitchell or your church members. He telling the Lord against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are proved right when you speak and justify when you judge. Whenever we're really truthful with ourselves, what I'm going to say next, you're going to love it because it's good news. The Lord told me to tell you this now. He said, flip back 17 pages to Psalm 34. Flip back 30, 17 pages, and in the fourth verse through eight verse, it says, I sought the Lord. And he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, for their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He saved him out of all his troubles. This poor man called and the Lord heard him and he saved him out of all his troubles. Then the angel of the Lord camped around those who feared him and he delivered them. 
But Lord have mercy. This last one, number eight. I wish Sister McGrew was here. She'll smile up here. It said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who take refuge in him. But Sister Tennessee, he had some questions. Oh, uh, if the Lord gave you life this morning, if the Lord gave you health and strength, if the Lord put food on your table, if the Lord gave you a bank account, if the Lord brought you out the crack house, if the Lord freed you from a prison cell, if the Lord <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Come on now. If the Lord removed sickness from your body, if the Lord freed you from a bad marriage, if the Lord If the Lord, if it was the Lord, well, who do we owe? <laughs> if the Lord. <laughs> church from nothing if the Lord have gave us a building to build if the Lord if the Lord I just want to know if the Lord been good to you if the Lord, I want to know if the Lord, well, who do we owe? I'm going to my seat, but <laughs> the Lord just gave me, don't cry, baby. If the Lord gave me. A woman like you. Yeah. If the Lord gonna bless you from your ailments. If the Lord make me love you with all of my strength. If the Lord and seen us through bad times. If the Lord, who do we owe it to? He gave me one point. Down in the penitentiary, they say, Reverend, you preach one-point sermons. The Lord just be wanting me to tell y'all one thing. <laughs> when you know that you have sinned against the Lord, and you understand where your famine and plagues come from, then you can pray. There's nothing that we can do that can stop the Lord from loving us. I want y'all to understand that there's nothing that we can do. He said, just pray. Just pray. Just pray. God sees. 
God knows and God hears everything. The doors of the church are now open.